you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Then I guess we'll just have to see what happens, but a word of warning. If you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Don't be a stranger. And it's been so long since I've had any visitors. Come on down. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something?
Then drop the knife. We should. It'll go a long way to building trust with her. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. But killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. <sighs> the blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clang. Thank you. Maybe now we can just... talk. Against your better judgement, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. Unarmed. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. <sighs> just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. I know. I just said that. Now why are you here to kill me? Don't just tell her that. <laughs> Is that why they threw me down here? But I don't want to hurt anyone. I like the world, I think. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here a long time. Just how long has she been down here? If I'm supposed to be capable of ending the world, then how did I wind up here, chained to a wall? Have they told you why I'm allegedly so... dangerous? Sooner or later, you'll understand that I have your best interests at heart. Hopefully sooner. How sweet. Now be a pal and help me get out of here, would you? We could figure out how to deal with them after I'm free. Fine. What do you want to know? You can't. Don't bother. I'm guessing you don't have the key then. I'm sure there's a key somewhere around here, and if there isn't... Well, we can always put that knife to good use. Her sharp eyes settle on the edge of the blade. She isn't suggesting what I think she's suggesting, right? She is. I'm sure of it. She hesitates before answering. You can address me as your royal highness, or her majesty. Any honorific should do, really. Note the lack of detail. You can't trust her. Too long. Again, she offers no specifics. No matter how hard you try, you'll never get a straight answer out of her. Oh? Have you decided what to do with me? You know why you're here. Oh, you have to be kidding me! You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. If you don't have the key, maybe you should go looking for it. I'm sure it's somewhere upstairs doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. That would be fine. I can lose an arm. She speaks with almost complete nonchalance. If we were stuck down here for long enough, I'm sure we'd be nonchalant about cutting our way out. Anything to finally be free. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You make your way back to the bottom of the stairs. 
This would have been so much easier if you'd simply slain her like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. Against your better judgement, you place the blade against the princess's arm, just above the massive, unyielding chain. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and you make quick work of it. Before long, you're able to crack through bone, and she pulls the bleeding stub of her arm through the iron gauntlet. She didn't so much as utter a sound. Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you, her fierce gaze meeting your eye. How is she so composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I just can't let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. Stop that. I thought this was a little too easy. Your body lunges forward to sink the blade into her back, but the princess swiftly moves out of the way before you can connect. Stop it! Stop resisting me! I am trying to get you out of here alive! The blade. Move. The. Blade. You're doing your best to help me, aren't you? I can see the conflict in your eyes. I'll make this quick. She steps forward and pries the blade from your rigid hands. Maybe I'll see you in another life. And then she slits your throat with an almost clinical ease. Her face remains unchanged as she watches you collapse to the ground, blood flowing from your butchered neck. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. I hope it was worth it. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. My tricks? What on earth are you talking about? We've just met for the first time. Don't forget what he did to us the last time around. I wouldn't trust a word out of his mouth. There's got to be a way out of here, for us and for the princess. We just have to keep trying. I'm inclined to agree. If he doesn't remember what happened last time, maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you two, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. And as far as trying to help her goes, need I remind you how catastrophically dangerous she is to the world at large? I told you about the stakes of this situation less than a minute ago. Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. You died last time, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. The absolute irony. Well, that's one way to put it, I guess. You really don't remember what happened last time, do you? You practically forced the princess to kill us. That doesn't sound like the sort of thing I'd do, which is honestly all the more reason for you to not buy into whatever self-delusions the three of you are crafting. But this is a thought experiment, so I suppose I'll continue to give you the benefit of the doubt. If I did, practically force the princess to kill you. It was probably for a good reason. Did you try and free her? Did you say something really mean to me? 
because if I really did what you said I did, you probably deserved it. I'm a professional, after all. Sure you are. Anyway, I believe your second question was, What's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. You forced the princess to kill us and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself? Or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything just like I told you she would? What a conveniently ambiguous group of things for her to ruin. For all we know, the princess left the cabin and never saw another soul. Oh, how I wish that were the case, but if the princess weren't a certain, inevitable threat to the world, the four of us wouldn't be here. And yet, here we are. You're talking in circles. No, I'm talking in facts. Just be quick about it. She just can. Believe me, I wish I could tell you more, but you'll just have to trust that what I'm saying is true, and that, despite it all, you're fully up to the task that's been given to you. You haven't given us an ounce of proof. You do know that, right? What proof could you possibly ask for? Literally anything. <sighs> Fine. Check your pockets. You put your hands in your pockets and pull out an envelope with the words, The Evidence, written across the front. Within, you find a note in your handwriting. It reads, The princess will end the world if you don't stop her. This is an immutable truth. That doesn't prove anything. How do we know you didn't just forge our handwriting? I wish I could tell you more, but there are some rules I have to follow for all our sakes. Please just trust that these rules are in place for a reason. I'm on your side. You mean you're on our side as long as we do what you tell us to? Exactly. Because you not doing what I tell you to do means you're putting the world at risk. I think we've got everything out of him we're gonna get. People locked her in that basement, and I told you what this place is. It's a path in the woods. Don't overcomplicate things. Look, I'm not supposed to say this, but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy, if that helps, but it's just the way things are. Oh. I didn't know we were special. Of course you're special. Why else would you be here? Uh, yes. Right. We're here because we're special. Look, you're annoyed that you're here. I get it. I'm also annoyed that I'm here. But we're all in this together, and we're dealing with a bit of a ticking clock right now, so please just get to the cabin. I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail will just overcomplicate an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. Not to sound like a broken record, but the less you know about her, the better things will go for all of us. I know it sounds like I'm hiding something, but you're just going to have to trust me here. Great. Now, if you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Yes, yes, don't believe a word she says. Just go in, take the knife, and do what you're supposed to. Wink. Did you just say wink out loud? No, I didn't. Wink. Just ignore this clown and focus on the princess.
The interior of the cabin is less a cosy woodland retreat and more like a dungeon. A few pathetic wisps of starlight attempt to illuminate the cold, uninviting stone walls, and thick, wrought iron bars barricade the windows, reminding anyone who enters that this is a prison. The only furniture of note is an iron table, bolted to the floor, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Very different. Yes, but why? Did he change it? Or did it change all on its own? Maybe it's a different cabin entirely. Now isn't that a novel thought? Maybe you haven't actually been here before. I hope this means you'll finally drop your ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. Don't get distracted by minor details. I'm afraid I'm going to insist we take the blade. We're in a dangerous situation and I'm not letting us go down there without a weapon. Are you sure? She killed us with it last time. What if she turns it against us again? Yes, I'm sure. And I've already got a plan for that. Still with those past life delusions, are we? I hope part of that plan is don't give the world any monstrosity your only weapon. Because unless you've decided to arm the princess, I don't think you need to worry about her having a weapon. Peachy. We'll be fine. Okay. I'm trusting you. You take the blade from the table. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Thanks. I mean it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an old stone staircase. A few sputtering torches attempt to vaguely illuminate your path, dancing across glimmering patches of slimy moss on the stone steps. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favour. Her voice, harsh but controlled, carries up the stairs. Is that a visitor I hear? Please, come downstairs. It's been a while since I've had company. Does she remember us? You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. She looks up at you, the heavy collar around her neck clanking loudly as she moves, the chains binding both her wrists to the far wall, joining the metallic chorus as she adjusts her hands in her lap. So much for cutting her out of here. Do you hear yourself right now? Cutting her out of here never should have been on the table. Have you noticed the empty chain on the wall? Odd that in a place where everything seems to serve a distinct purpose, there would be something so obviously useless. That was there last time too, wasn't it? It was. What an interesting development. Why don't you have a seat? The two of us should chat before you bury that thing in my heart. You step towards the princess, but she stops you before you get too close holding up one shackled hand. There is fine. I'd prefer we keep some distance until we've sorted this out. That's reasonable. We do have a weapon. Might as well put her at ease. You do as she asks and sit on the floor, still a good distance away from her. Thank you. Now, what are your intentions for me? Yes, your intentions. You have a knife. What are you going to do with it? Why are you here? There isn't a keyhole in these shackles, so I'm afraid my only way out is surgical removal. Is she forgetting about the shackle on her neck? Or does she think she'd survive a beheading? You're right. Maybe she's delusional. All the more reason not to trust her. Unless she really could survive. Though I suppose you could just be here to kill me. But I don't think that's in either of our best interests. Oh? Are we acknowledging that? I thought we weren't going to give away the game. But yeah, I remember. I guess what you said back in the woods really was true. As much as I would like to remain in denial, it's no use. This has complicated things. It's complicated things how, exactly. 
Ideally, this was supposed to be one and done. You go to the cabin, you heroically slay the princess, and in the process you save the entire world from being damned to oblivion. The situation right now, where you're getting a second shot at things, is a contingency. A contingency for what? For you failing, obviously. And you being here means that things are going to be a lot harder than they were. I really shouldn't say anything else, I'm just going to make it worse, just... Good luck. Now hold on, if you knew this could happen, why didn't you believe us back in the woods? Why lay out all those hypotheticals? We didn't have to talk in circles. I needed you to believe this was your first time here, even if that wasn't the truth. I hoped if I pushed back hard enough I could cram this seeping mess back into the bottle. And maybe I wanted to be the first version of me that you met. I didn't want to be confronted by the alternative. That's pathetic. I never said I wasn't. I get it. It would be pretty upsetting, wouldn't it? To know that you might not be the first version of yourself. At least we can remember what happened before. Seems like we should count ourselves lucky for that. Exactly, he gets it. You're lucky. So don't waste that luck by messing it up again. All right? Moving on. Why is it important for us to be ignorant? How is it ever helpful to be in the dark? The more I say, the more your mind will swim into dangerous waters. Even saying that is too much. Your success hinges on you having imperfect information. For the sake of the entire world, you need to accept that. I won't. Fine, but you won't get another word from me on the matter. Yeah, sure. We'll see about that. Just give it a rest, this isn't helping. Focus. This is a serious situation. You shouldn't be daydreaming. Nothing happened. You died. I went upstairs. I couldn't leave. I found myself in a new place in chains again. More of them. And now you're back. Is that really all she knows? It's not like we have much of a clue about how things work. And she's probably even more in the dark than we are. You're looking at me like I might be hiding something. I'm not. I guess it's possible she really doesn't know anything. Maybe both of us are stuck in this loop without any idea why or how. No, no. Like I trust you to come any closer with that knife. All you're going to do is hand it to me and watch me work. But she would have to cut her head off, right? She can't be suggesting that. She certainly seems confident. Maybe she knows something we don't. Or maybe you should consider the most likely scenario. She's bluffing so she can disarm you. Though if she isn't bluffing, whatever she has planned might be for her benefit alone. There's no guarantee that what's good for her is good for us. So. What should we do? I don't know. I'm just spelling out our options, listing the pros and cons. Then let me help you. I'll start with the cons. If you're handing her your weapon, the cons are that she might use it to escape and end the entire world. And she might use it to kill you. That doesn't sound great. What about the pros? There are none. The pros are that we can't trust him. Possibly even more than we can't trust her. Whatever she has planned could do something to mess with what he has planned. Or maybe they're both screwing us over in their own ways. I do. So I guess this all comes down to which of us caves first. And it's not going to be me. Extremely patient. It's probably better if we take action anyway. No use trying to wait her out. That's playing to her strengths. I don't know, but you could always try it on. Maybe it'll fit. I hope I don't actually have to say this, but please don't lock yourself in chains. We need you ambulatory if you're going to save the world.
I wouldn't do that if I were you. And why is that? Do I even need to explain myself? It's a shackle, and it's one without a key. Do you want to be stuck here like she is? And what? Is it going to lock the second we put our wrist into it? I don't know. Maybe it will. He doesn't want us to look at it. That's all the reason we need to investigate. But what if he's telling the truth? He isn't. I am. Good. Forget you ever saw it. Nice try, but I won't. Specifically because you told me to. Slide it over. No, absolutely not. I am not letting you hand your only weapon over to the world-ending princess. Until you come up with any other idea, like, say, I don't know, doing your job and slaying her, you remain rigidly in place. You tried this last time. Do you want to know how it went for you? Oh, I remember. She killed us, which, by your estimation, ended the world, right? Oh, Rory tried to take over your body. Exactly. If I were you, I wouldn't be too keen on repeating your mistake. Hell, we could even force your hand and do it ourselves. I'm not afraid of dying again. Are you? A little. I think you got your point across. Fine. You slide the blade across the floor. The princess maintains unsettling eye contact as she reaches down to pick it up. Thanks. She pulls up her hair, smiling slightly, as she raises the blade to her throat. What is she doing? She doesn't say another word as she cuts into her own neck. No! Her eyes stare forward, unblinking, her smile unwavering as she soars through skin, veins, cartilage. At last she reaches bone, the blade grinding audibly against her vertebra as it continues to slice its way through her neck. I'll be damned. She's actually doing your job for you. Why would she do that? Huh. So that's her play. Killing herself? She isn't dead yet. Finally. You hear a snap. Her eye twitches. There's an uneasy silence. She remains motionless for a long moment, her twitching eye the only movement in the room, until at last it stops in an unsettling half-wink. Her head twists slowly to the side, flopping to her shoulder, and her neck opens. The remaining tissue is not enough to hold the weight of her severed head. It stretches and tears until finally it falls to the floor, completely free. It bounces a few times before rolling to a stop at your feet. Oh no, oh no, oh no, what did we do? Can, can we put it back? Please tell me we can put it back. The princess's eyes stare up at you, dead. Congratulations, you saved the world. Are you sure she's not winking at us? Obviously not. She is thoroughly deceased. I hate this. Can we just get out of here now, please? Of course, the princess is slain and the world is saved. Whenever you're ready, you can proceed to your reward. We should take her with us, don't you think? What? No, you shouldn't do that. Why would you do that? I can think of lots of reasons. A trophy, proof of our victory. Hell, we could even give her a proper burial. She did save the world, right? You don't need proof, you don't need a trophy, and she doesn't deserve a burial. Just leave. Even after all that, you're still not satisfied, are you? Something is still motivating you to keep things the way you want them. I'm just eager to put this all behind us and give you your reward. Stop reading into things, the danger has passed. You can relax. I'm just keeping myself sharp. I'm not so eager to put my guard down. I am. I'm on team, let's put this all behind us, so can we leave already? Fine. But if we're leaving, then we're taking the blade. I feel exposed without it. 
With your work done, you remove the blade from the princess's corpse and make your way back upstairs, closing the door to the basement behind you. You can think of it as sealing yourself off from an unpleasant chapter of your life. It's all uphill from here. The windows. Do you see that? We used to be able to see the outside world from up here, but now it's just... empty. The door. Check the door. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of some place far away. You don't have to act surprised. We could see this vast emptiness through the windows. But if everything's gone, does that mean we're not gonna get our reward? This is your reward. An eternity of bliss, if you'll have it. And I suggest that you have it. Okay. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. Like hell it is. This isn't an ending. In fact, now that the princess has been slain, endings are a thing of the past. No, this is the beginning of eternity. Your reward, like I just told you. Time passes. You can't be sure if it's days, or months, or years, or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Decades? No, it can't be decades. We can't go along with this. We can't let him win. We still have a blade. Let's use it on ourselves and start over. He's suggesting you kill yourself. You shouldn't kill yourself when you have an eternity of bliss right in front of you. You goddamn spiteful bastard. Are you really going to turn down immortality itself just to make me lose? Why should it matter if we die at this point? Haven't you already gotten what you want? I don't have to answer that. That's all we needed to hear. You raise the blade, then drive it into your heart. You collapse to the floor, everything goes dark, and you die. You're a genocidal maniac, you know that, right? Yeah, we'll see about that. You're on a path in the woods. See, that wasn't so bad. And now we've got another chance to get to the bottom of things. Bit by bit, we're starting to unravel this place. There are so many more threads to pull once you stop feeling. That's a little dark, buddy. You feeling okay? I'm feeling nothing. And I like that just fine. He's not wrong. Sentimentality won't help us here. We need scientific rigor. So you've been here before. Of course you've been here before. What count is it this time? Two? It's our third. What gave it away? Your open discussions. The last time we were here, you were in full-blown denial about the possibility of us restarting. What changed? Have you just been pretending to forget? I'm afraid not. Whatever other versions of me you've met in those other lifetimes were just that. Other versions of me. I just wish I'd been... So you knew how all this worked. Why didn't you ever tell us? We could have used it to our advantage. That's because there is no using it to your advantage. The more information you have, the harder it will be for you to succeed. You say that. But we didn't have to do anything last time. She slew herself. It was nauseating. Yes. She cut off her head. And now she's dead. And I doubt she'll be able to do much of anything from the grave. She cut off her head? Her head? Without you doing anything? Yes. Then why, pray tell, are you here? Oh, I know that one. We killed ourselves. Why? Because you thought trying to stuff us away in a corner for eternity was a suitable reward. Was it not? What better reward is there than eternal bliss? You should have been happy. We weren't. We were bored. You were bored? I was just unhappy. 
there were still answers that we needed to find. It was actually working. And you killed yourself. I can't believe it. You ruined everything. How does us dying ruin everything? What aren't you telling us? It just does. And I'm not telling you lots of things, but it's for your own good. It's for the good of everyone. It seems to me like keeping secrets didn't help you last time, so you should start talking. Fine, the world doesn't stay saved if you die. And if the world isn't saved, then that means she is dead. Oh, now isn't that interesting. I assumed she'd just be a pile of old bones, but perhaps she's not. There's only one way to find out. We should go see her. Let's try something different this time. We've already seen what happens when we slay her, and I'm not convinced that's a way out for us. I'm not even convinced there is a world to save. If this isn't the same path in the woods you're used to, that means that her influence is already spreading and you're running out of time. Her influence. What's that supposed to mean? It means exactly what I said. Don't overthink it or you run the risk of making your task so much more difficult than it has to be. And what is that supposed to mean? <sighs> Forget I said anything. I've probably already made things worse and I need to stop talking about this now before I definitely make things worse. Oh, come on, tell us your secrets. Haven't we been through enough? Don't we deserve to know? No. Is there a reason it would be raining? If there is, it doesn't matter. If a bit of rain is the best her influence can conjure, then we have nothing to worry about. I'm sure you've already heard my words of warning in one of your past lives. You've already managed to slay her once, just... Don't muck it up this time, alright? What we do is entirely up to us. And we have all those mysteries to unravel. Isn't that right? You aren't here to solve a mystery. You're here to save the world. That's what you say. But how can we be sure? We can't be sure of anything except what's right in front of us. Okay, but we should care about the fate of the world. Why? Because, because we should. I, I don't know. It's important. Is it? Yes! I think. Don't let them make you second-guess yourself. The fate of the world is the most important thing there is. For all we know, the world you're talking about isn't even real. Of course it's real. Where do you think you are? Somewhere else? Maybe we are. This is horribly unproductive. The cabin and your extremely important destiny await. As soon as you enter the cabin, you're struck by an overwhelming scent of decay, of mold and death and stagnant water. The once stately wooden building is bloated, its beams dripping with a black ooze of putrefaction, all but the exterior stone walls warped beyond recognition. It must have been beautiful once, but in its ruin, it is beyond repulsive. But you're not alone. You can feel something watching you. There is a figure faintly outlined against the rotting wood of the wall. Is that... her? It's like she isn't even there. See? We killed her. You're right. Maybe she doesn't reset like us. She certainly doesn't look the same as she did last time. Before you can make a move, the figure is gone, vanishing behind the door on the far side of the room. The door at the end of the room, but there isn't a door. There's a mirror, that's it. The mirror? Is this some kind of joke? Did you all plan this out before dying? There is no mirror. There's the door to the basement, the table, and the pristine blade. Huh. That's strange. There's supposed to be a pristine blade. Why isn't there a pristine blade? Maybe it's gone because she already killed herself with it. But we had it with us when we died. And besides, everything else has reset. Why wouldn't the blade have reset too? Maybe it's because we've already explored that avenue. We've seen what happens when we slay her. Maybe this place has decided we don't need to try that again. 
I suppose it doesn't matter why the blade is gone, but you're going to have to find it if you're going to do this right. So why don't you march over to that door and make your way down to the basement? Maybe the mirror isn't real. Maybe it is real, and he's lying through his teeth to stop us from looking into it. But it seems like whatever we want to do, our next step is on the other side of the room. You're clearly hallucinating, but I'd rather not get into it with you right now. The door to the basement is on the far side of the room, whether you can see it or not. You make your way to the door at the end of the room, stopping just in front of it. You must think you're looking at that mirror you mentioned earlier, the one that doesn't exist. Just reach forward and open the door. It's so hazy. We should try and clean it off. You reach forward and place your hand on the door to the basement. The handle is just a little to your right, and a little down. Yeah, we can see it now. So much for our reflection. We didn't need to see ourselves anyway. I'm much more interested in seeing other things. No way left to go but down. The door to the basement groans open. The air is foul and wet, so thick that you can almost feel it settle onto your skin in layers of grime. The stairs are coated with slimy algae, the wood rotted through in places, reeking of fetid vegetation. A wispy figure watches you from the bottom of the stairs, face veiled in shadows, legs submerged up to her shins in dark waters. There she is again. Barely. She's just an old memory. Your eyes lock for a brief moment, then she vanishes around the corner. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A bloated body floating face down in slowly rising waters, her wrist still bound to the wall by a heavy chain. This cell is a dark and isolated place with not so much as a window to allow starlight to penetrate the gloom. See? She's dead. She's not just dead. It looks like she's been rotting. So killing her does stick. Mostly. But if she's dead, then what are we supposed to do? She isn't dead. You clearly just believe she is. Her corpse is floating right in front of us. You can stop it with the mind games. If she's dead, then do we even have to do anything? How can she be a threat to the world like this? Your thoughts are cut short by the sound of a slamming door and a clicking lock. You turn to see the shade of the princess staring down at you from the top of the stairs. So that's where the blade is. It's already in her heart. And yet she isn't dead. She is dead. Have you never heard of a ghost before? Oh, for the love of... Can we not waste time arguing over the semantics of what is and isn't dead? She is clearly conscious. She clearly just slammed the door on you, and she clearly has a weapon. Your pristine blade sticking out of her chest. This is extremely bad. Catastrophic, even. Yet, yeah, dead or not, what are we supposed to do about her? Slaying, or destroying, if we want to be a little more death-neutral, seems off the table. Yeah, this is tricky. But let's talk to her. See what kind of information she has that we don't. But she hasn't said anything. Are you sure she can talk like this? Bold of you to come back here after what you did. You were supposed to take me with you. Didn't I ask you for help? This doesn't help. But she doesn't answer your question. All she does is watch you in shadowed silence. Do you hear that trickling sound? The water's rising, isn't it? It is. And it's rising fast. Well, that's interesting. We've never drowned before. I wonder how it'll feel. Bad, I bet. I don't think dying ever feels good. Yes, how astute. 
dying is bad and you should avoid it. How about you stop trying to talk to her and do something instead? The princess eyes you with a disaffected gaze as you rush up the stairs, but you don't make it past the first few steps. The door bursts open, a powerful wave of water crashing down towards you, and you're swept up in the flood. Your head slams into the basement wall. You come to a moment later, suspended in darkness, disorientated, only aware of the surface of the water and the emptiness above. And of course, the princess, hovering above you, watching in silence as you struggle to stay afloat in the icy depths. There's no way out. It's so dark and cold, I think our limbs are slowing down. How much longer can we do this? Just keep breathing, we'll figure this out. Or we won't. It doesn't matter either way. But you don't have time to figure anything out. Something cold and clammy wraps around your ankle. You're dragged under only able to take one last hopeful gulp of air before your head is plunged into the freezing depths. As you sink below the surface, you see it. Or rather, you see her. The body you found floating when you first arrived, its hand is locked around your ankle, the heavy chains pulling you both down into the unfeeling, suffocating nothingness. Just get it away from us, please! The past is the past. There's no change in it. There's nothing to fix. And there's not a lot we can do about the present either. Not unless we think like we should have been doing all along. But there is no thinking as you drown. You desperately try to pull yourself back to the surface again. And again. And again. Your icy limbs flailing desperately against the grip of her rotting corpse. And all the while her ghastly figure stares down at you, expressionless. As unfeeling as the weight around your ankle. Your lungs filled with water, the same your mind filled with blood. In the end, we're not so different. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? But it feels so bad. Like looking into it right now is going to be the end of everything. You're right. Part of me wants the truth, but something stronger is holding me back. Fear. Okay. If you say so, we'll trust you. Feels too good to be true. There's a world beyond the endless walls of the long quiet. I am curious to see what it means for us to know it. We are real. Nothing is an idea that dwells in the absence of something. But nothing cannot exist on its own. And because of that, Nothing can't exist. It doesn't matter if there are. People are frail and impermanent. You and I are the only things that interest me.
This one is guarded sorrow. She saw herself as alone, but in the end had the courage to share with another. She will make for a deep heart. Do not mourn her. She has finally been heard. The next time I see you, each of us will finally know what we are. I will be here, waiting for you.